you're having trouble feeling the shake, just doing one arm can really help. And now we'll do the left. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle your arms down, around. Beautiful day in Denver. It snowed two days ago, now it's like 60, so I figured I'd bring you guys outside before we head to the gym and train. It's beautiful. It's so pretty out, it's so blue. Dabo dee dabo die. All right, everyone, what's going on? Just trained legs, uh, it's Saturday. You guys are watching this on Sunday, so happy Sunday. Thanks to everyone who's watching, but my point is I just trained legs and then I hit Dick's Sporting Goods to try on some clothes and pick out a yoga mat. So I am exhausted, but it can't be too difficult to do this back voiceover. So I'm gonna do it in one shot and just uh, catch up with you all. So the Puerto Rico Pro is underway right now. I believe my boy Santi got second place. I'm not sure how Brett's doing. Um, he said he didn't get the call, uh, Matt Jansen did, so I don't think Brett I was really in there for any sort of contention. I'm not sure where Eduardo is either, but that's really gonna be it for that. The Open is, I think, later, so Milan's gonna be uh, coming out there, hopefully, and they should be uh, giving a good showing. I think Josh Wade's competing in the Cal Pro, so there's a lot going on this weekend, but we'll talk about this training and just kind of leave it at that. I have plenty of time to catch up on comments, Puerto Rico Pro, and whatever I can uh, bring out to you guys, starting strength, so. I've been enjoying making videos lately and <clears throat> one thing that I do find myself struggling with is sometimes if I feel like what I've made isn't perfect and granted I don't get a lot of views so perfection is really like relatively speaking like it's irrelevant it doesn't matter if it's good or perfect because of the amount of traffic right <clears throat> but if I don't like what I'm posting or I don't like what I'm saying or I don't like the footage like it's really bad then I feel uncomfortable posting it and I'll like second guess the voiceover and I'll try to make up for it so one of my friends told me just because you don't find it perfect post it anyways just keep doing the work because not everything's going to be perfect and you can't like hold yourself back from doing something because you're like oh it's not going to come out perfect so it's not that I'm being lazy it's just that I just train legs and hustle and to read the comments and give you guys good answers right now, I don't have the energy. So I'm not just gonna not do anything. I'd rather give you guys the voiceover. So back training, my pull day was just lat pull downs for warm ups in the chin up, palms facing you position. After a few warm up sets, higher rep, eight to 12 reps, I go to the chin ups and start right there. And I did four sets of five today. So that's 20 reps with chin ups and four sets. <clears throat> a current PR for the year based on this new training year. And as you all know, <clears throat> on my push and pull days, I like to incorporate one of the opposite movements just for, from an efficiency standpoint. We all know by now it's great to stimulate a muscle at least a couple times a week. So <clears throat> if you're gonna have a pull, and a, pull, a pull and a push day and they're gonna be somewhat far apart, which they should be if they're very intense, switch it up. So this is me um, after having a lot of lower back tenderness from training so much just switching to an alternate exercise from the barbell press. So again, you have to adjust, but you can't just bail out on things because it's not ideal. Ideally, I would have loved to throw up 145 pounds on the barbell press and get a huge shoulder pump and feel jacked and continue building strength on that movement, but <clears throat> we live good. But my lower back wouldn't have handled it. And then I had to do rows and shrugs and then today I trained legs and tomorrow. So I'm saving my lower back and not deadlifting and doing barbell overhead press all the time is basically how I'm gonna do that. I find it pretty impressive that people do like the big three plus other bar barbell movements all the time. If you had me deadlifting twice a week with any frequency or any weight, I mean any intensity, I would not be able to keep up with my workouts. Even this <clears throat> overhead extension requires you to like well, I really inflate my rib cage and I suck in my abs. So when I'm done with two two sets of these or one set, one for each arm, my abs are toast. Like I feel like I just did like a couple reps on the, like a heavy squat. So I use my lower back and I use my abs and I use my rib cage and I practice being full and that's just something that my body and structure lends itself to. So I always work on external rotation and getting my lats out of the way and keeping my rib cage up. And that's something that carries over into my training. So when I do a deadlift day, <clears throat> I'm so, or a squat day or a leg day, I'm so exhausted because I spend the majority of the day working on that, you know, pulling in and being tall. 
just because if not, I turn into like a fat slob. It's just really bad uh, posture and that's draining on me. So when I go to the gym and continue having that posture and protecting my lower back, adding deadlifts to that is like, whew, just a scary situation. So lower back's tender, but everything's great and training legs today was awesome. I'll make that video and post it out for you guys soon and get to your comments as well. Thanks, peace. That zip though. All right, so let's get caught up a little bit here. Apex Wolf says, I've been watching you for the last four years and I can't believe you're not even close to 100K. Crazy. And I'll address this, even though it's not really a question, but I've thought about it. And really, I think the major reason is that whatever got my channel growing, whatever gave my channel the biggest traction and amount of followers, that content's like what I stopped doing. And I was one of the original, I guess I was one of the people that kind of hit it before it really, really peaked. So I had the ability to create videos and create a large following based on eating content, but the eating and the cheat meals were just a part of severe dieting. So it's not like a good part of a lifestyle. When you diet and you get incredibly lean, I don't consider myself incredibly lean now. When you get very, very lean, like stage lean, that type of eating is normal and necessary basically. Uh, so it's kind of strange that some channels went fully in that direction and I get the eating competition and eating challenge stuff, but I was never gonna abandon bodybuilding and abandon making workout content and posing footage just so I could get that type of content following up for eating and I didn't wanna subject myself to that. So I have nothing against it, it's just that the reason I don't do certain things like certain drugs or engage in certain questionable activities, a lot of the reason is because I feel guilty and like I can't go to sleep at night. So if I smoke a cigarette or do, or do nicotine or smoke a vape, it's not, the, it's not the harm that I'm worried about, it's the mental problem of me succumbing to a vice and then beating myself up over it. So it's not the vice that hurts me, it's me who hurts me. And when it comes to binge eating for views, I do it as much as I can, but at a certain point, like filming a 20K challenge, it's hard for me to sleep at night that week. I feel bad for myself. So that's why my channel stopped growing. And obviously I don't have the most outgoing, awesome personality. Look at guys like Max Tuning and Guzman and stuff. They built a business out of this. I was just doing it because I love lifting. Next question, a year ago you said you were perma-blasting 800 megs of uh, something, 400 megs of something. That is, that is a, uh, uh, that's not a perma-blast, first of all. That's like a perma-beginners, whatever you wanna call it, regimen. If I were ever doing that, and it was a year ago, I would absolutely not continue doing that, and I would never recommend someone to just do that for a year. Obviously, if you wanna engage in using testosterone and it's legal in your country or you have a prescription, <clears throat> you would never wanna take a significant dose for just a haphazardly period of time. That's something that you wanna consult with your doctor and use it for a short term. So to go three, four, five times what a doctor might give you all year is ridiculous. Maybe playing in that one to three times ballpark for the whole year is reasonable, but you're exceeding that with that right there by a large multiplying factor, so no. Here's a really good question. Hi Raf, I have a question. How have you found is the best way to grow your legs? I currently train them twice a week incorporating major compounds, but they're not responding. <clears throat> if you're a beginner or like a beginning intermediate, less than a few years of training, I would get something like the starting strength book, read about the squat, and then if you want to self-program it, do sets of three. Let's say your max is 275. Okay, pick 200 pounds and do three sets of three. There you go. Next week, five sets of three. And when you can do seven sets of three perfectly, you call it like lift mastery. Go up in weight and drop back down to three sets. It's actually something I got from Jason Blaha. So let's say you pick 200 pounds, three sets of three on Monday. On Friday, go ahead and do five sets of three. It's still easy, okay. Next Tuesday, do seven sets of three and then take off till Saturday. On Saturday, bump it to 210. Just do three sets of three and just repeat doing that. It's probably gonna be more or less twice a week. Now that is gonna be your strength component. Other than that, do whatever you need, whether it's hamstring curl work because you don't deadlift much, whether it's deadlift work because you are extremely weak and you, you do have a good back, you just have to get better at it, maybe deficit deadlift. So if you wanna grow your legs, I think the most important thing is moderate volume squatting with a moderately heavy weight with a progressive overload linear style of training for years. 
And during that linear style of training, you can start to add the deadlift when you're sort of plateauing, bring in a new exercise. You're sort of plateauing on that, add in a one-legged split squat for 20 reps. Train your body differently, but that should be your strength component. And when you stall, you start bringing in variations to support and add volume so you can recover more, do more work in the muscle groups and bring that compound up. So I hope that helps you a little bit. Honestly, you should be really be running a squat or some sort of power building program for your legs. But again, form is everything. Form is everything. Form is everything if you want to grow your legs. Hey bro, it's Paul. Great videos as usual. I was curious, the yoga mornings every morning, how long and where does one start? One starts by Googling or YouTubing a beginner yoga video. I've been following Brett Larkin for like five years, just completely randomly. And so I type in Brett Larkin beginner yoga and I look for something in the 20 minute range, whether it's a detox, a morning stretch, a morning anxiety. I don't do the ones that are like, like very resistance training oriented. If it says workout, I avoid them but breathing relaxation, vinyasa, a flow, a let's say a shoulder stretch, 20 minutes every morning. And I'm on day five or six right now. And my ability to take deeper breaths has increased like 5%. Like my ribs feel less stuck in place. I can actually take a deep breath and peak my like oxygen intake and release it. And it's so good for my anxiety and it's so good for stress. So. When I'm in the gym and I'm like going to catch my breath and I just start to take a deep one and I can just breathe and breathe, it feels really good. Let's say I'm getting a massage and I want to take a deep breath to relax my body. It's like endless the amount of air I'm, I'm starting to gain. So it feels excellent. I'd start every day, maybe five or six days a week, 20 minutes and get yourself a mat. Any idea how much mobility your buddy Devin does? I always wonder how much it varies between serious lifters. Yeah, I do know how much he does. And I'm going to say it's significantly less than I do. But you have to keep in mind that Devin is a, just like an elite athlete. Devin can climb a 70 foot tree and build a tree jump and jump off of it and land properly. He has a neuromuscular control and agility and let's say coordination that is totally absent in my day to day life. I can surf and skateboard, but I can't climb trees. I can't jump things. I don't have that type of motor control or that type of body control. He does because that's how he grew up. So he's almost like a childlike in the way he can move. So he doesn't require as much mobility as me, but I'd say he does about half. He does a lot of form rolling and stretching and someone who does half what I do, they're still serious about it. It's just instead of doing it every day, maybe he does it every other day seriously. So he does it a good amount, but he does not like very religious about it. But trust me, he's healed some injuries and he doesn't complain about it and post it on social media, but he's working on himself. So I'd say probably 50 to 75% as much as myself, but maybe just as much at this current time, maybe he's doing something I don't know about. So that's just historically what I've known throughout our friendship. The last comment, shit physique, you look gay, watch out for the AIDS. People, man, it's, it's insane. It's so funny. <laughs> Well, I don't know whether to cringe or to laugh. Like if my friend said that, I might laugh. But if a stranger said that to me, I'd be like, like be like, what? Do you have a problem? Are we about to fight? Hamstrings look dope, bro. Posterior chain of peace. Thank you, Adam. I am doing my hamstring curls. I am doing my one leg stiff leg deadlift, all with good form, all with progressive or the stiff leg deadlifts with progressive overload, and the hamstring curls with just I'd say a certain amount of high volume that I need to do after I increase the progressive overload. So it doesn't take heavy deadlifting. It doesn't take serious, like beating yourself up, do a good curl, do a good compound, whether it's squats or deadlifts or something, and you can slowly, slowly add volume. So that'll do it. I'll see you guys soon. Peace and uh, watch out for the AIDS.